we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to introduce uh, Kathy, and she'll go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Kathy Cunningham. I'm from the Summit County Fair. Um, I've been a director there for almost 30 years, and um, I am their fair secretary, fair manager. So we are going to um, talk about how to get your tax exempt status. Um, and Howard's gonna share the screen. Um, and our treasurer, Diana Cochran, who has been um, a director for several years, is um, she's gonna do part of this as well. So can you go to the next slide? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that you have to do is you need to write a letter to ODA, um, letting them know that you are seeking your status um, with the IRS, just to make them aware, because you're going to have to include this in your packet. Next slide. So this is the letter that we wrote um, to the Ohio Department of Agriculture, just letting them know that we were seeking that. Um, and I signed it and so did our President Lee. And then your next step is going to, you need to figure out if you are incorporated. If you, and here is a link that you can go if you're not sure if you are. Um, and Howard's gonna share that screen so you can see what it looks like. So this is the website and you can type in, if we type in Summit County Agricultural Society, Oh my goodness. <laughs> It'll fix it. There you go. And then hit search. Oh, I think society is spelled wrong. Oh, just yeah. click it up there. Just do this. Maybe it'll search that too. Okay. okay. So right here it comes up um, as, and we are actually the Summit County Agricultural Society of Ohio. Um, we have some weird other ones. Um, we were in a lawsuit and the county took our name. It was, it was a weird. So we went with this and this is what we stayed with. Um, so if, if you're incorporated, it will come up and show your active, your documents and things like that. Um, and your document images are on here and you will need those if you don't have them. Um, and those are the types of items that they want. You'll have to attach to, um, to your paperwork to turn into the IRS. Okay, let's say that you are not, um, you do not have your, um, you're not incorporated. You have to do that. So that's the first step that you're going to do. And, um, I have included um, some links in here. You don't need to push them, Howard. But this is a, and this will be shared, and I can even share it with anyone. But this is a great booklet. I read through it um, that kind of walks you through the steps of getting incorporated. And that is the form that you'll need to file. And it's not a lengthy process. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to file that. And then every... I wanna say, um, if I'm right, it's every four or five years, you have to just refile and it's like a $25 fee. And if you forget, which in the past, I will admit we've done that, um, you know, you just pay a small little fee to refile. They'll send you a letter saying, oh, you didn't file. Um, so, but, but it's a pretty easy step. So after you are all incorporated and you're everything, if the next couple slides, Howard's gonna show you, is just the paperwork that we included in our, um, it's all of our paperwork for being incorporated. There's several, there's a couple. So just, this is what you might be looking for um, if you're looking through files because you, you know, you are. And then the next slide is what they'll send you every time you up um, 
And like I said, if it's a $25, the next slides, it just shows the thing that you fill out. It's a $25 filing fee to re-up yours. So now you are ready to, um, to start your paperwork. And um, you don't have to click that, Howard. Um, but this is the link to, um, to the form 1023. And um, there are lots of schedules to these. You will only need Schedule E. Um, and the reason that I know that is because when we did this, um, it was very intimidating when you look at the paperwork. I was like, I don't know if we can do this. Um, and then I started talking to other fairs that had done it. And, um, you know, they kind of gave me the confidence to do it and just said, listen, you don't need all those schedules. And a lot of them, when you look at them, you'll realize you don't need them. Um, but every fair I talked to pretty much only did Schedule E. There were a couple that did Schedule H, and that mostly has to do with if you give um, education scholarships to like your employees within, but I would say that you would probably only need Schedule E, okay? Okay, so if you go to the next slide, this is what the application looks like. So the first is pretty simple. It's, um, you know, your information, um, you, you know, your tax ID number that you have under, um, cause you can keep your same tax ID number so you don't need a new one. So it's the same one that you have with the Department of Agriculture. Um, and then it goes into answering que these questions. And um, some of them are kind of self-explanatory and some of them I really didn't understand. I had to go investigate. Um, but as we go through this, so we filled out this paperwork on our own. Um, and then once we were done um, filling out this paperwork, except for when we got to the financial portion of it, which um, we did, and Diana will talk about that a little bit later. Um, we did, we did, um, hire someone to, to do that financial part. But on the second page, um, it asks you questions um, and sometimes you have to attach documents to it. So this particular one, um, it was requiring us, do we have something in our constitution that um, is our purpose, okay? So that is actually um, question one. So is there something in our constitution that um, in part three is our, that's our purpose. Um, and then the next question was, do we have something that's a disillusion clause? Well, in our constitution, we did not have a disillusion clause at first. Um, so we had actually in our first one, we didn't check that. Um, and when our paperwork went through, they came back and said, you have to have this dissolution clause. And they gave us the, um, what we needed. And if Howard goes to the next slide, um, this was, and it, you'll attach paperwork. So anytime you fill in something, you then will attach paperwork. Well, this is the dissolution clause um, that we had to add to our constitution. And basically um, they gave us the wordage and we didn't actually have to wait for that. We just had to send them minutes that, um, that, we, that we were going to add that to our ballot in November. Um, you know, and I told her, hey, it could be, you know, they could vote it down, but she's like, as long as I have the minutes that you're gonna add it. Well, we added it to our, you know, and then I sent those, um, the reconstitution after November, but they had already given us our letter saying we were tax exempt. So, um, and then the first part is our purpose. And we took our mission statement from our constitution. And then we also have this purpose on our website. So those were the two items that you, that sometimes you have to add. And that's what we added as those. Okay. And then if you go to a lot of items in here, you leave blank because they don't really refer to your organization. And they may, and you know, whether you're going to be the financial part or you're going to have someone else. Do that. Um, but a lot of, of these yep, you take care. blank because they didn't. Bye-bye. 
you know, they didn't apply to our organization. So if we go to the next slide. So the next slide, there were, there were places where they wanted us, do you have people in your organization that are related or they have a connection to each other? So we had to, every director that was married or if it was a family member. Um, and so, you know, we had to spell out who was related to who and if they worked there, you know, if you were on the board and then and you had someone else that worked there. So you had to kind of spell that all out. Um, and then it was, you know, are there directors that, um, that are also staff members and are they related? And so, you know, we had to spell that out as well. Um, and we had to make sure that we had a conflict of interest policy. So, and you had to include that as well into your, um, you know, into your doc, into your documents. Um, and on page, on part um, eight, page six, that talks about like fundraising and grants. And I think that there was a fair out there that actually, um, when they turned theirs in, I think they were confusing what fundraising was with what operating funds were and got into a little bit. And so as we, you know, our fundraising, we kind of really spelled it out as actual fundraising, not, you know, some people are like the fair's a fundraiser. We don't really consider that fundraising. That's kind of our operation. Fundraising would be if we go out and get a company as a sponsor or if we did a bake sale, which we don't, but you know, if we did, um, or anything like that, like sometimes we'll do Chipotle nights as fundraisers, or we did a car raffle as fundraisers. So those are the types of items um, that they're looking for. And do we pay anyone? And we do um, pay a lady to do, and any of our directors um, that sell sponsorships can turn in to collect a fee as well. Um, so those are the types of items that you're going to have to spell out for them. And um, we tried to be simple and to the point. Um, one of another fair had told us, don't put too much detail, just, you know, be simple and to the point. Because the more detail, the more questions they're, they're going to ask. Um, and then if you go to the next page, it's just a series of questions. A lot of the questions were they were a little bit harder to answer because I was like, does that apply to us? Does it not apply to us? Um, and try to answer them the, to the best of, of my ability. Um, and what I was also told by other several other fairs is when they do get your applicate, when they get all this paperwork, um, if they have a problem or issue with something, they'll come back to you. And they did. I mean, they did come back and ask us questions um, and say, this is what you need and helped us work through them. Um, which was great because I mean, some of these items, you know, you're like, no, I don't think that applies to me, but does it? Um, and then the next page, it's just more questions about your organization, um, your history. If you, some of these will ask if you're submitting some of those schedules, um, and then the next page, it's how you undertake fundraising, what items do you do, um, and then you just check that the items, um, you know, that refer to you. And a lot of these are, if you hit no, you can skip sections. The next page. And actually that part six is on, um, about the fundraising was actually on page six. Um, but we already, I, I went over that, you know, you put where you fundraise. <sighs> and just more of answering questions and you have to figure out if they fit to you in a yes or no. And then we're going to get to page, um, the next page is financial. And we're going to turn that over to Diana and um, even though Diane, we didn't pull this, Diana worked with the people that do our 990 to do that. So I'll let Diana talk about that. Okay, so, you know, we did turn this over to um, the people that do our 990. It's like four years on there that you have to put um, 
if you do your own 990, you can probably figure it out pretty easy. We don't do our own 990. We do hire someone out. They didn't Diana, charge we can't us. hear you. You can't so hear something me? Something you're doing. Can you hear me now? Nope. Oh, no. Seriously? Nope. Is your sound off? Yeah, it is. I think we're here in our... Oh, okay. Yeah, we have to, since we're both in the same room, I apologize. We have to do a double mute here because we're in the same room or echo. So I'm, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Diane. Okay, so um, if you look at like, for instance, line one is, um, and you go to your 990, line 11 is your nine on your 990. Um, and then if you go to line three, where it says um, investment income, that's line 10 on your 990. And it's on down, down the line, um, you know, on this form, line seven is line 11 on your 990. And it's, if you do your own 990, you can find it, but we don't do it. So I got confused and said, hey, help, you know. And the, the guy that does our 990 did not charge us um, a, a whole lot of money to do this. And they'll, they will go back with the most recent completed year you do not need to rush to get your year finished if you are not done yet and your person filed the extension for this year. It's the last most completed years of your 990. So. That's about it. You can go back to Kathy. Thank you, Diana. So. Um, and we can send out information to your mute's on. You're both muted. Okay, okay. sorry. <laughs> um, so we will, we can also, um, you know, Diana could write out and include if anybody needs help with that, with that if you don't do your 990, but you don't have the money to ask you know, where we got line one from, line three, line seven, um, you can reach out to us and, and um, Dinah would be more than happy to, to help you. It's just when we looked at these, we weren't sure where they contributed, you know, gifts and grants. And we had talked to one fair that was still kind of in the middle of theirs. And the attorney that was doing theirs had put like, their demolition derby was a fundraiser and it just got very mixed up for them. So we wanted to try to make it as simple as possible for us. And that's why we were like, we're just going to pay the couple hundred dollars and let them pull out the, the correct figures and put them on these lines. Um, and then if you go to the next page, it's more finance. Oh, he's on the next page. It's financial. And then it just asks you about your, um, your public charity status, and we didn't have to answer any of these questions. Um, and then, you know, you go to the next, um, it's on the next page. Um, again, this was pretty much a blank page. None of this really applied to us. And then that's the end of the document. Um, we filled it out, we signed it. And what's really nice about this is that it is, um, then the next document is the Schedule E. Um, and this is basically, there were a few things that we answered yes to um, it, because this also has to do with us being that we were under ODA. So we had to um, put in the Schedule C to answer those questions or the Schedule E, sorry. Um, but the second part of the Schedule E, we left it blank. It didn't apply to us. So if you go, next one. And then you have to also include a list of all of your directors, have their addresses, their title, and if they work or get any type of compensation. Um, so I did blank that out just for this since, you know, it goes up on YouTube, but um, myself and Diana, Di myself as being the secretary, Diana as being the treasurer. And um, we have Kelsey who she's our assistant in the office. Um, so we had to put what compensation they get. And Megan, um, 
she cleans our restrooms during our events. So we had to put that she gets compensation too. So you'll need to include um, that. And then on the next page, I kind of gave, you know, what you need to attach um, the things like that, um, <laughs> our purpose, the disbursement that they wanted us to, um, to put in there and the exact verbiage of, of that um, disbursement in there. And um, so we did exactly what she sent us, we put in there. And then the next page is they include this in there, which is wonderful. It's a nice checklist. So you can check and make sure that you have everything on there that, that they're looking for. Um, and you include that in your paperwork. And, um, and then the locations of those disillusions, they want to see paperwork with that, with that on there. Um, and then do you guys have any questions? I, um, after we were done filling it out, we then went to two or three fairs and asked if we could look at their paperwork that they submitted as well. And as we compared our paperwork with them, we were pretty much had answered the same questions, the same, there were a few that were different. So I called them and asked them, you know, why did you check yes for this? Um, we felt we were no. And, you know, kind of dug in that way. Um, there were a few that I changed because I was like, mm, maybe that is, you know, a yes answer, not a no answer for us. Um, and we submitted our paperwork and it was probably 30 days I heard um, from a lady, she called and she said, hey, we have some questions um, and we, there's a few things you're missing. And so she sent me over an email list of stuff that we, you know, that we needed, which was that disbursement. Um, and we needed to, um, there was one piece of paperwork for our, um, our incorporation that I was missing that I had to send over to her. And um, we got that taken care of and they sent us approval in May. So it was, it was pretty quick. Um, and then after talking to a few other fairs, pretty quick, some other fairs were not. But um, if you guys have any questions and we can even email and share this with you and our contacts on here, you can email Diana if you have questions about those financials. Well, and this will be posted on the uh... Ohio.OhioFairs.org website under the convention documents. This whole presentation will be on there. Just a couple of thoughts before we get into Q&A here. Um, yeah. Yep, you know, the IRS does not understand our business. So your total fair process of 52 weeks is part of your whole uh, fund or your whole funds. Uh, there's nothing special in there other than possibly sponsorships and fundraising type of activities. It's all meant to support the total fair um, operation from maintenance to capital and, and, and the uh, operations and, and maintenance of the facility. And, and as I repeat myself, capital. So don't get real detail oriented in here. Um, Kathy, what was the cost to uh, file the form with IRS? There was no cost to file the form. Okay. It's it's free. Just send it in. Okay. Then the costs that you encumbered were then what? The cost that we that was a few hundred dollars was the um for the the accountant to do that does our 990 to do those financials. Those two pages in there that are financials, um, I feel like if we would have done them, we would have done been more our figures would have been higher because we would have thought they were looking for something different, but they're looking, they're look, they want to pull your 990 and see if those figures match. So whatever figures are on the 990, which Diana can talk more about, she handles our finances. I do not. So. Okay. Well, and if you recall uh, during the spring meetings, uh, I, or the uh, Ohio Department of Agriculture in their video that we presented is asking that you move away from them and onto your own. So, um, but again, the, we, we got to keep in mind, we got to keep filing our 990s. And if you fall in, in arrears on that, 
And we have a fair that fell in arrears three years they didn't file. They're just coming back on board with, with the IRS. But you'll lose your tax exemption status in the system. It, 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 it will show you as not being tax exempt. We had that happen to a fair and they'd lost a, uh, a FEMA grant because of that. Uh, they were and then they weren't and they, they lost their grant. So um, let's go ahead and open it to questions. Um, if you just want to unmute yourself. We couldn't have done that good a job. Well, while you're thinking of that, uh, we have the next session coming up. will be next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll be on the health order, uh, the latest health order of uh, April the 8th. And we'll be talking about the orders that got rescinded, which was all the fair orders. And um, we'll be talking about that on, on how to look at that order and develop a, a, a health plan. Um, that'll be next Tuesday uh, that Paul and I will do. So is there any questions? Howard, you said you, it's going to be on the website. Is it possible to send it out and link also out to the... Ron, did you have a question? Yeah. <clears throat> is it, you said it's going to be on the website. Is it possible to also send out a link to the, um, the video to, to, to everyone like you did before, like you advertised this? Yeah, I'm muted. No, you're live. Both of you are live. Okay, you're live now, Carl. Okay, go ahead, Ron. Yes, I was questioning whether, in fact, you know, you said it was going to be on the uh, OFME website. Is it also possible to send out a link by an email? Yes. That would be helpful. I appreciate it. Yeah, I will forward this presentation to all the district directors, and I'll also include Erie, Ron. Thank you. Well, if we're uh, good here, um, let's see, uh, Meg or Morrow County's on, Lake County's on, Muskingum County's on, Erie County's on. I don't recognize Carolyn, but again, we appreciate your uh, uh, joining on with us today. We knew this was probably gonna be one of those dry topics and uh, sure enough, it is. But anyway, again, Kathy or Diane, do you have anything to close? <laughs> no, I, if anybody has any questions, I, I'm always happy to help um, with the financials or whatever. Okay. And I see Montgomery County on here as well. Hi, Bob. Okay, we're going to go ahead and stop the recording. And uh, again, thank you for.